And if we don't have a strong paraeducator uh, part of our delivery system and education, then we're not going to have that great educational delivery system that we all desire and other students deserve. Coming here is really empowering. Learn new techniques for being the para that I am. I feel a sense of appreciation, a sense of value that I get as being a para. I feel validated here. Empower. Learn. Validate. These are just a few of the ways paraeducators describe their experience at the California School Employees Association Paraeducator Conference. The conference had its beginnings in 1997 when George Datz, Director of Education and Training, was inspired to provide workshops for paraeducators. Anna Lou Pickett founded the National Resource Center for Paraeducators at the City University of New York, and in 1997, they decided to have uh, their annual conference in Los Angeles. So we decided, Carla and I, <laughs> that we could host it. We certainly had the top involvement as far as uh, money and people. Karen Gardner, now retired, was a paraeducator and CSEA executive board member. Carla Mitchler, also retired, was DATS' secretary, and with other members and staff, they attended the conference. Mitchler recalls DATS' response when the conference concluded. George's first response was, we can do this better. DATS hired a labor relations representative to work in his department. Mitchler recalls. When she found out that the paraeducator conference was going to be a part of her job, she felt that isn't what she signed up for and left. And so I was able to jump in. I said, George, let me do it. And he said, OK. Pickett had coined the term paraeducator, and CSEA wanted to use that for California's classified workers. In the early days, districts referred to paraeducators as instructional assistants, as instructional aides, and many districts referred to them as aides. I have always been offended by the word aid. It was almost demeaning. You were there to assist the teacher and that was it. You know, you were there to aid them in their everyday. But in reality, we gave direct instruction. We sat at a table with students. We helped them learn to read. We taught them math. We taught them science and social studies. We gave direct instruction. The word paraeducator means alongside of. And so a paraeducator is alongside of a teacher. It held a higher esteem. It meant that, you know what, I'm almost as equal as a teacher. I just don't have the credential. George was really big on modules. We had modules for everything. And he developed a module for paraeducators. And he just started using that term. And we just threw out the other one. We didn't tell anybody. We just did it. The name change was a step in the right direction. Some districts even negotiated agreements to send paraeducators to the conference. And CSEA had support from the California Diagnostic Centers. California Diagnostic Centers um, exist to help the schools. They come in and do workshops for paraeducators and teachers throughout the state. Early on, Mitchler and Gardner recognized the key to a successful conference, input from attendees. Our input was mostly from the paraeducators that we knew, and those of us who were working would talk to the paraeducators in our school site and the region. Somebody wanted sign language. Carla found a sign interpreter, and uh, she did several workshops. When No Child Left Behind came, CSEA did a whole study and uh, what to do to help the paras qualify so they can keep their jobs. So I went looking for people to come in and teach to the test, to the math, to the reading, to whatever they needed. And with all of that, uh, we decided that they also need something for themselves to relieve stress, to sit and rejuvenate. School districts also supported the conference. The districts were excited and a little bit overwhelmed that a union would take the time and spend the money to have a conference to help their employees. It, it was amazing and it, it was a win-win all the way around. Dats had a working relationship with then California State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Delaine Easton. 
The first co-sponsor was the California Department of Education. George was a very bright man, and he realized that to give the union conference credibility, we needed some heavyweights on the ticket. So the California Department of Education was the first one. Delane Easton was our very first keynote speaker when we had our first conference in Sacramento right after the CSEA conference. We had uh, 600 folks there, which I thought was absolutely amazing. You know, I think every educator is a role model for children. And they could be educators who are working in the cafeteria. They could be educators who are working as custodians. They could be educators who are working in as aides. There are any one of dozens of different roles they could be playing. The next to come on board was Cal State Long Beach. Cal State Long Beach had a paraeducator program, which at that time was run by Len Albright and Cynthia Hutton. And when Len left, Cynthia Hutton Eagle took over. This conference is important because paraeducators uh, traditionally don't receive a lot of training to do the jobs that they do. Quite often they're hired by school districts with little or no training and working with children and once they uh, receive their jobs they're given very little training when they get started. And I know this from experience because I was a paraeducator. That's how I started my career. After that, I brought in California School Boards Association, uh, AXA, and then one year we gave it a try with SEIU. The co-sponsors provided credibility to the conference. And CSEA wanted to ensure attendees could get information about their union. Our conference had given the opportunity for paraeducators to learn about their job at school. Beyond the job itself, it gave them an idea that, holy cow, we have rights. We have rights. And through that, the union involvement became a huge uh, reward for them. And they looked to the union more and more and developed this idea that we are the union. And then they realized, oh my goodness, my dues are paying for me to get all of this. Wow, what a country, what a union. The Paraeducator Conference has come a long way from the LA Biltmore Hotel where George Datz walked away claiming, CSEA can do this better. A major win is that districts have the funding to send paraeducators to the conference. When Proposition 30 was passed, it provided funding, a lot of funding for schools. Part of that funding included mandated funding for paraeducator training for professional development. We finally reached the point where we received the same respect as a teacher. We had the right, and by law, and the district had to train us just like they do teachers. Thanks to the visionary George Datz and the dedicated efforts of CSEA members and staff, the Paraeducator Conference attendance has exceeded 1,300 participants. Attendees come from all over California, and visitors from other states are invited to the conference. Reen Dozer, past president of Public School Employees of Washington State, was one of the invited guests at the 2016 Para Conference. I was amazed to come into a room with 1,300 paraeducators. I'm hoping that we can have a paraeducator conference, if not just workshops that we can present on the issues that our paras are facing in Washington. The conference also hosts teachers and school superintendents. This conference is important to our state because then these people go to their districts and they apply the strategies that they learn and they talk about this conference with their peers. The work that happens in this conference will directly connect to success for our students across our state and nothing's more powerful than that. To me, the most important thing that this conference did for our members was to say, we care about you, we realize that you're important, and we're going to provide you more so that you can do your job even better and perhaps promote. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I'm glad I took it. I encourage anybody the opportunity to attend a paraeducator conference. There's more courses that I, I want to take and feel I need to take. I was able to look in there, kind of like a candy store. Ooh, I want to know about this. Ooh, I want to know about that. It's just very beneficial because it's going to help you through your day, and it's going to help the kids, bottom line. CSEA's Paraeducator Conference. 
just one more benefit of being a member of the California School Employees Association.